Hey everyone, Barry Rager here. This is part three of a three-part series titled Steelhead Patterns. Now, if you wanna start from the beginning, I'll put the link to part one above. What I'm referring to when I'm talking about patterns is what lure works on a particular run on a particular day when you're fishing for steelhead. I always start with jigs because I think they're the least intrusive, and I covered that in part one. Once I've effectively covered that water with a jig, I'll switch to beads, which I covered in part two. If I haven't had any success with beads, or let's say maybe I've hooked a fish with a jig or a bead, and I still think there might be a fish in that water, I'll always run a spinner through that water, which is what I'm covering here in part three. Spinners are one of the most exciting ways to catch steelhead. Jigs and beads are both float fishing techniques, and so it's a visual bite. Whereas spinner bites are aggressive and they're instantaneous, it's all about the feel. So now let's get into the equipment starting with rods. Now if the water is low to medium height, I always use a spinning rod. The rod that I use is a G Loomis GL3. This is the 1024S, it's an eight and a half foot, 8 to 12 pound test. It's medium power, fast action. I have it paired up with a Shimano Stratic 2500 and I run P-Line CX 10 pound moss green. Now if the water is medium to high, I'm gonna switch to a casting rod. The rod that I have for that is a, it's also a G Loomis. It's an old GL2. It's the same model, a 1024, but it's the C. It's paired up with a Shimano Corrado 201 and I run 10 pound ultra green on this rod. So now let's talk spinners. My spinner arsenal is very simple. I carry two colors of spinners when I'm on the river. If it's dark conditions, like it's first light, last light, the water's colored up, or it's stormy, I use a black body with a matte silver blade. If it's clear, or if it's sunny, I use a number four polished brass with a black body. Now the reason I use a black body is because it's most contrasting, if you can see that, to that blade. Steelhead generally will be sitting on the bottom and so as that spinner is approaching them, they're going to see only the back side of that blade as it's crossing over that body. The contrasting black body causes a strobing effect. I assemble my own spinners out of R&B components just because I like the heavier brass bodies and the blades are heavier so I can feel the thump of that spinner. So now I'm gonna go over a couple video clips and I'm gonna explain the technique as I go. I'll also throw in some tips. I found a couple old clips where I hooked some steelhead on spinners. So I'm gonna play those and I'm gonna break down my technique as we go. And I'll throw in some tips. Hit play. So on this particular day, the river was running at a medium height. That's why I've got my casting rod. Even though it's sunny, you can see the river is mostly in the shade, so I'm going to be using that matte silver blade with a black body. So this first cast, I'm going to cast in the top of that holding water and let that spinner swing across the holding water. Watch my rod tip right here. You'll see I'm kind of making like a jigging motion, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the feel of that spinner blade. You want that spinner just barely spinning. So this next cast, I'm gonna cast just a little bit further down river and try to work that tail out. Again, watch my rod tip. lightly jigging it. And fish on. Now while I'm fighting this fish, let me give you a tip. Probably the most important part of steelhead fishing is getting that spinner down into the strike zone. Jed Davis wrote a book about spinner fishing for steelhead salmon and trout and he has a saying called save the spinner syndrome. And that's what some fishermen have because they're trying to save their spinners. I know spinners are expensive, but if you're not fishing down in that strike zone, you're just not gonna have much luck.
If you do get hung up, there's a couple things that you can do to get that spinner loose. As soon as your spinner stops and you know it's not a fish, just give your rod a flick. Sometimes that's just enough to dislodge that spinner. But if that doesn't work, use the old line belly trick. And what I mean by that is slowly let out a bunch of line so that there's a belly in your line that's downriver of your spinner. And then once you know that that belly is downriver of your spinner, put your rod tip down, close that bell, and start giving that rod some jerks upriver while you're reeling as fast as you can. What that does is it creates a pull from downriver, and nine times out of 10, that'll pull your spinner off of the rock. This is a native fish, so I land it in that catch and release net. And you'll see it's a big old hen. Kind of snaky, so it's probably a downriver fish. Now on this day, the river was pretty low, so now I've got my spinning rod. Because it's bright, I'm using a polished brass blade with the black body. Now again, you can see I've got that rod tip down. I'm just barely reeling, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm just kind of jigging my rod tip to get a feel for that spinner. And fish on. If you spinner fish for steelhead, you're gonna end up with some line twist issues, even if you're using a barrel swivel tied into the eye of your spinner. There's a couple things you can do to eliminate that. One, you can stop your blade about every five to 10 seconds as you're swinging it across the holding water. And how you do that is you just put a little bit of slack in your line for just a second. In theory, when it starts spinning again, it starts spinning in the opposite direction. The other thing, when you do reel in, sometimes you'll see that spinner trying to unwind. Just, just hold it out of the water until it comes almost to a stop. This is another big native steelhead, so once again I land it in that catch and release net. These fish are just incredible. Now this is a pretty short clip and you'll see why in a second, but there's some holding water above me, but I can't wade any farther upstream. So what I'm doing is I'm casting up into that holding water and I have to reel super fast to avoid losing my spinner and to get that spinner working down into that holding water. So here's cast two. And fish on. Now it's exciting when steelhead jump, but when they are above the water, it allows them to shake their head. And sometimes it ends up causing you to lose that fish. <laughs> now, if you like the video, make sure to hit subscribe, turn on the notification bell. I put out a new video every Friday at 6 p.m. 
during the fishing season. And I say during the fishing season because it's probably obvious that I hunt as well and I have some vacations, some hunts planned over the next few months. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna post some fishing videos, but I'm definitely gonna take a little bit of a break. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment field. I get back to everyone. And if I earned it, hit the like button. I'll see you on the next one.